Okay, traders, welcome to this week's live analysis session with me, Patrick Manley. Um, if you can see a Tickmill welcome screen um, and you can hear me, if you could type a Y in the, the chat box just to let me know that um, the audio and the visuals are working. Thanks very much. Okay, let's, uh, let's get going here. Um, before we do, obviously, as always, um, it's incredibly important that we uh, adhere to the risk disclaimer and, um, and that you're aware that of the inherent uh, risk in trading any financial instrument and also that any of the views expressed by me here today are expressly my own, they are not those of Tickmill. Um, for those who are joining us for the first time, a quick um, introduction with respect to who I am. Um, my name is Patrick Manley. I've been um, involved in the markets now for 15 years. Um, I wasn't always in, uh, in the financial markets. After I graduated, I went into the world of consulting. I then did a uh, consulting startup that, um, that experienced some pretty rapid growth and I um, cashed in my shares in that business in, uh, in 2004 and then um, started to explore my, my passion for markets. Um, and really, in 2004, what I was ostensibly doing was, was gambling. Um, I had a bunch of time on my hands and I had some, uh, some capital to play with. And so I, I started um, trading, well, loosely described as trading, um, the S&P 500, day trading. The market was predominantly trending north and I caught some lucky early breaks and, um, and started to make some, some decent and then some quite significant gains. However, as is the, uh, often the case, my beginner's luck ran out and um, I, not, I not just gave back the gains I made, I uh, further to that, I would actually experience a six figure loss. Um, and it was at that point that I decided either, you know, stop gambling or, um, or I get serious about trading in the markets and, um, and go about this as a commercial endeavor. And so I sought out a mentor worked um, exclusively with, with him for uh, 18 months, two years, really learning not just the technical skills, but also the mental skills that are required to, um, to be successful in the markets. I came, uh, during that period I developed uh, and back-tested, extensively back-tested um, my trading plan, forward-tested it, and I actually um, came back into the markets in 2008 um, in conditions <coughs> similar to, not quite the same as we're currently experiencing. And since 2008, on an annual basis, I've, um, I've been profitable. The performance you can see on the screen at the moment references from 2013. That's when I actually started and managed account service initially for friends and family, and that's, um, that's grown organically. And um, again, on an annual basis, that's, um, this, the accounts have, uh, have been profitable. Um, and that's really how I look at performance. I'm not concerned about the outcomes of um, individual trades or even a string of trades. Um, for me, what I'm focused on is the next 100 trades um, because I know that if I adhere to my process and my plan and I execute that to, to the best of my ability, then that's where I'll see the returns. You know, I, I'm, I'm perfectly comfortable with the idea that I could easily go through a, a period of of 10 or more losing trades, <laughs> but because um, I've got uh, a laser focus on risk reward with respect to the, my, my trading, I know that over the next 100 trades, um, I'll get, I should see positive returns based on, on, um, on the strategy's efficiency. Um, predominantly now my trading is end of day. Um, it's an end of day strategy. And there's some intraday stuff, but mainly it's end of day and, um, and it's an automated um, trade management uh, setup that I have now. So I've got, uh, I've got quite a bit of time on my hands and um, I have some additional projects that, um, that I work on. I'm, as most of you know, Will, uh, I'm the, one of the resident market experts at Tickmill, providing a daily market outlook and a, a chart setup that's of interest. And you can subscribe to get those updates in your inbox 
um, through the Ticknell blog site. I'm also the head of trading and trader education at a uh, leading FX <coughs> trading education firm called FX Career Swap, uh, whereby we offer um, re emerging retail trading talents the opportunity to enhance their development and ultimately trade uh, a larger capital base um, through our funded account offering, which really helps retail traders to overcome the major issue that, um, that tends to, to hinder their development, and that's capitalization. Because you can, have an, you, you can have an excellent plan and strategy, and if you adhere to professional risk management, um, so keeping your, you know, your risk uh, low, um, ultimately, if you experience you know, 30 to 50% returns in a year, which are, which are fantastic, um, if, you're just, if you're trading a $1,000 account or, or less, then that isn't, that, that isn't going to add up to a, uh, a financial return that's going to move the needle for anyone. And so <clears throat> what tends to happen with, with retail traders is that they, they risk more than they, they should do and end up blowing up accounts um, when they experience a small drawdown. And so what we do at um, an FX Careers Office, we help with your, your development as a trader. Uh, we have a team of over 80 traders now that we're working with at various stages of development. And um, through our, our courses and our education modules and our weekly webinars, um, we develop you to the point that you can then go on to uh, manage and grow an account with a significant capital base. And so for anyone who wants to uh, learn more about that, you can contact me through LinkedIn or through the site fxcareerswap.com. Okay, so that gives you a flavour of, of where I'm coming from. And, um, and what I want to do now is, um, is start to think about uh, some of the markets that I'm tracking and some of the opportunities that I see that are potentially developing. Um, as a general note, with respect to the, the market at the moment, certainly um, in, the, in the majors, we've seen this grind grinding action over the past week or so, um, predominantly driven by uh, some big options flows that we've seen that are pinning the market, so to speak. We've got, uh, by the end of today, we'll have had $10 billion um, dollars worth of Euro USD options expiring between this 108 and 109 level. And that's kind of been pinning the market and creating this grinding heavy rotation action that we're seeing that's, um, that's frustrating. But um, those are predominantly rolling off uh, like I say today, and so that should uh, that should allow us to to see some um, more decent flow action in the markets. Um, we've seen uh, the implied volatility curves come off since we uh, experienced the height of the crisis, that initial panic phase, and you can see they're starting to tick up again, notably in the in the Australian dollar. So this means that we should start to be starting to see um, more trading opportunities developing. These are the, those options that are rolling off today. We've got. Um, 1.2 billion down at 107.50 in the euro. I think that's close to where we've seen the lows today. You can see the cluster of, of, uh, of about 10 billion here between 107.50 and 109.50, and that's really been, been pinning the market. Um, with respect to the, the where I'm seeing a uh, decent opportunity developing, um, well, and we'll, we'll talk about it when I move into the charts in a minute, um, but this is, the, uh, this is a, a study of the Canadian dollar from a seasonality perspective. And what, what this shows is that the second quarter over the past 20 years has had a tendency to see, or, or we've had a tendency to witness, Canadian dollar strength. And um, you can see that in, in terms of uh, the last 20 years, 13 times, so about 65% of the time, we've seen a decline in the Canadian dollar. And on average, you can see that we get, you know, somewhere between 300 and anywhere up to 1,100 pips to the downside. But when we've seen upside, it's been um, between 100 and, say, 450 pips. So you can see um, from a setup perspective here, just using seasonality, that the declines that we see 65% um, of the time are more than two to one the advances we see in the other 35% of the time. So if you're thinking just about, a, 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 obviously it's a, small, a relatively small sample, but from a statistical perspective, that gives us a bit of an edge there in terms of a, a setup um, with respect to the, the seasonality. 
And if we then think about that in terms of what we've seen in, with oil, we'll move into uh, take a look at the oil chart now. Uh, let's just bring this that. So I posted, um, I did a chart of the day earlier in the week with respect to oil. And what we've seen with oil basically is obviously that we've seen this historic decline. We saw the, um, the May contract trade at uh, negative levels, you know, historic, um, historic re reprints in terms of the, the oil contract. But in the continuous contract here, what I'd highlighted to the guys in the trade team is that we've seen a pretty um, nice uh, symmetry, uh, cycle, from a cycle perspective, we've seen some nice symmetry in terms of this ending pattern here. If we think about this as a, an impulsive decline. And if we, you know, just uh, from an Elliott Wave perspective, for those who, uh, who are uh, Elliott Wave enthusiasts, you can see that we've got the one, two, and then we've had our three, four, and then we've had an equality leg five complete here. <clears throat> and I talked to the guys in the room about this uh, 12 to $12.50 area as potentially being significant for oil, certainly for a tradable low. And um, it looks like potentially tonight, uh, for my strategy anyway, uh, we could get a long signal here if, uh, if we get a green close on oil um, somewhere around, uh, well, somewhere above uh, the $14 level. And what could we reasonably expect in terms of um, upside here. Well, what I use again is, um, is these symmetry swings. So if we look back to um, the last advance we saw prior to the decline, and we overlay that versus our current low, then that would give us a target up at, at the $25 um, dollar level. So if we think about risk reward here for the trades, um, we're going to get long. Let's, you know, we close at or current levels. So, you know, probably looking at that $15 level. Um, you've got a stop at the lows here. Oh, well, you could use a stop below today's low to en enhance the risk reward. But given the volatility, you probably want to use the um, the low. So we can even if we just if we replicated the price action we saw prior to to the, the, the downdraft, um, then we could see that. Uh, we could drift higher here. You know, this this I'm, I'm, not, I'm not expecting this to uh, to happen in um, in any short order. So it's, uh, st uh, certainly with the you know the current economic environment. But that said, we could drift higher here over um, the next couple of months, and you get a, a three to one nearly risk reward on on the trade there. And if we do get a, a first leg of recovery here, then um, then there's a chance, or, or technically certainly we could see a, uh, a three-way bounce at a minimum and um, and if we think in terms of some type of move like this where we test um, let's just bring in fib retracements so if we fib the entire decline you know we it's certainly into even the 38.2 here let's actually um, see where that comes in uh, there we go. So yeah, I mean, even if we just thought in terms of making a 38.2% retracement, um, which uh, you know technically uh, could well be on the cards, then we'd be up at $30 a barrel. And you know, if we get a if we get a, a, a signal or in terms of a setup to add to add to a long trade here, well then you're looking at you know a risk reward scenario of closer to to 4.5 to one. So again, always thinking, you know, all the analysis in, analysis in the world is fantastic, but at the end of the day, what we're looking at is, is returns in our account. So we need to think about risk reward. So that this, the, the risk reward of this trade stacks up certainly if we, um, if we can see a corrective move play out here. So I'll be watching the, the crude oil on the close tonight. Now, if we think about crude oil, if, 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 this, is, if this is the view in terms of crude oil, well, then if we think back, if we think again about the, the Canadian dollar, obviously it trades um, as a proxy for crude oil. Well, then if we go to the, the Canadian dollar, we'll see if we've got a setup developing there, and we have. What we've done here with the Canadian dollar basically is we've um, we have this, this spike high during the crisis, and we've drifted low and made another leg lower, and so we've run into some symmetry swing resistance now. In, uh, in the Canadian dollar, we tested the level. We haven't been able to close above this 142 level, 
for two days. So we've got a clear area where we're seeing some supply in the market between 142 and, um, and this 142.80 area. So there's the supply. We've got those, you can see those two little tails there. We're testing the um, volatility resistance bands. And um, what I've been looking for now is a break through this 141 area to open up a deeper correction. Again, notice I'm using the term correction here. I'm not, I don't, I, you know, I'm not suggesting at this stage that we've seen the absolute high here, but certainly what we could think to ourselves, um, if we just look, just these settings, bringing the 61.8. So again, in terms of targets here, what we have is we have um, a symmetry swing objective that comes in and the quality level at 136. We've got the 61.8% retracement of this advance at, at, the, at 36 level. So if we can get, if I, certainly what I've been looking at tonight, if we get a, a close that take, closes below the near-term VWAP, so somewhere um, below uh, 141, let's see where it is, uh, somewhere below 141.30, let's say, that's going to flip this daily chart bearish. We'll have a bearish inside candle. These uh, tails at the 142 is, is giving us our resistance level. So what we could be, again, if we think in terms of risk reward, um, what we'll be looking at is, you know, selling the area here. We're looking at stop above this 142 area, where we've seen the resistance. And then we've got a downside target. Well, initially what we'd look at is for a move, certainly to test the 50% the retracement. We came close, we didn't do it. Um, so we're, we're seeing a, a more complex correction develop here. But if we can get this bearish close, we could certainly look for a move down initially to retest these prior lows, where you'd have 2.5 to 1 your risk reward. Then into the 50% retracement, obviously in the volatility support bands, we'd have to watch how we trade there. But you know, then you're looking at uh, three times the risk reward. And if the equality move plays out and we trade into that 61.8% retracement, well, then you're looking at a potential 5 to 1 risk reward. So again, you'd have to be thinking about that in terms of the, 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 the potential for a move in, in crude oil. But again, thinking about the seasonality, we know that statistically there's a 65% chance that, um, that the Canadian dollar can, uh, can see some strength um, in this second quarter. So that's just how I'm you know, thinking in terms of my trade thesis for, um, for getting long crude, and, uh, and short this Canadian dollar. I posted today the CAD yen um, also could give a, a, a bullish signal if we go to close above uh, the near term VWAP here. We've tested the volatility support bands, and, um, and that will then set up a move to certainly to test this uh, 78.47 in terms of the first resistance area, these prior highs as well. But through there, what I've been looking for is actually the equality move. And the 50% retracement of the decline, um, which will bring us into that 80 level. So again, let's just look at how we could position this from a trade perspective. So looking long, we have to get the close, at the uh, the VWAP to go bullish. Um, but again, what we've got there in terms of risk reward on that trade, uh, we probably need to widen the stop here to account for intraday volatility. But again, you get a three to one risk reward on that trade. Um, in the CAD yen, uh, the other one that's broken out here, I've noticed this morning as well, is the CAD Swiss. So again, similar story. You can see what I'm getting at here. We're seeing this CAD strength premised on the fact that we're seeing a little, uh, an uptick in crude oil. We've broken out of a, uh, a channel here or a, a potential bull flag. And then the, the objective here is again the equality move. For obviously, we'd watch how we trade at um, at this initial equality level uh, at the 70 handle, uh, the 50% retracement again. So, but by this stage, you know you'd have the trade running as a as a risk-free position if we get up here. And then the next uh, the next target is going to be the bigger equality objective and the um, and the 161 extension of this. Uh, structure. So, you know, there's moved there the potential to trade up to towards the 72 handle. So that's one of the core um, opportunities that I'm looking at 
at the moment. Let's uh, let's take a look through some of the major markets now. Um, looking at the dollar index, dollar. Well, I'll just take a sip of water here. So the dollar index been grinding higher, um, and what we're looking at at the moment is the potential now for the dollar index to test this equality objective. And what I've been looking for is by the time we get up there, that my uh, my momentum indicator here, the uh, psych indicator, would actually be testing this descending trend line that's potentially in place now. So as prices grind up into this 101.40 uh, to 102 area, I'll be watching for bearish reversal patterns on the daily chart. Obviously, that's my time frame um, to actually set short positions, especially if we're at or near testing um, this, uh, uh, this descending trend line resistance. So what we'd be looking for there would be then obviously prices to decline, and then we should see a pullback in terms of the, uh, the psych indicator as well. Uh, obviously, I, further confirmation would be the RSI stochastic trading above the 80 level and rolling over. So I'm watching this dollar index very carefully. As you'll know from previous weeks, um, I see the potential for, uh, for a dollar decline to develop. Obviously, potential is the, is the key word to focus on there. Um, I don't, you know, any, we can't talk in definitives in terms of the market. We're always dealing in, in probabilities here, but uh, I see a high probability opportunity. So I'm going to be watching how we trade when we test this area. If we break higher, then we could see the potential for a, a, a big double top here. That's the 161 extension of this structure. Um, but for now, my area of focus is going to be on this 78.6%, uh, 102 to 101.40 area and certainly want to see how we're trading in terms of the psych indicator when we get up there into that, uh, that descending trend line um, resistance. The other major markets, uh, the S&P 500. <coughs> so we spiked up into um, the, the resistance area. This is the equality objective versus this uh, initial reaction high and initial uh, reaction low here. And we got a bearish reversal and um, a short signal. Since then, we haven't really made uh, too much headway in terms of the downside. And what we could be potentially setting up for here is, uh, is another, yeah, another leg higher. As we know, the Federal Reserve um, and, and the, the US government have, are throwing everything they've got at these markets in terms of um, stimu uh, stimulus, both monetary policy and fiscal stimulus packages. And so what we could be looking at here, certainly whilst we trade above the uh, 26.90 area, is at another leg higher. Now, obviously, I'd, if, we, if we do push higher here, I'll be watching for the potential of a double top to develop here. But more likely than not, what I think we'll see is another leg higher into the, um, the 161 extension of our initial uh, reaction high and reaction low here, and the 78.6% retracement of the entire decline. Now, from there, I would anticipate, or I certainly I'd be watching for the potential uh, to, to set short positions with uh, bearish reversal patterns. The, um, you could easily see, or the, the technical um, target for that trade would actually be the equality move, which could take us back down to this 1900 area. And again, as I've talked about in prior sessions, do I anticipate that that's going to um, happen with the same force that we saw in terms of the initial Climb. No, I would expect more of a grinding trade, but certainly that's where I see um, the potential. But again, watching for a retest of the highest double top potential. Um, if we break through there, then we've got a target uh, to, to watch very carefully um, for short setups. So that's what I'm looking at in terms of uh, the S&P 500. Uh, gold. So Gold looks like it's about to retest these prior highs, which are, again, is an equality objective um, versus this structure. So what we're seeing is the uh, equality move played out, we tested, held it to the tick. Now we're seeing the, the pullback. And in terms of the, the support area, we are looking at um, this symmetry swing support. So we're seeing an equality, again, equality in the markets as a recurring theme. So we've held there. Now what I look for is the potential that we retest these highs and we've got the one, two, uh, 
72 extension of this last leg here, um, watching for bearish reversal patterns here to set short positions. Um, but again, we'll, uh, we'll be looking at symmetry swing support as the initial area of concern for any short um, positions, because we could be setting up then if we hold a symmetry swing for yet yeah, another spike higher up towards 1850 would be the equality objective before we see a more significant decline. But if we do get a short signal here, there is the potential, again, we're just thinking in terms of equality, that some, that we don't find symmetry swing support and, and we see actually a, a deeper decline. Um, let's remove that before again thinking about um, the next leg higher in terms of uh, gold. So really what I'm watching is the retest here of 1750 to 1770 looking for potential reversal patterns to, to set short positions is, uh, is the plan for me in gold. Crude we've just talked about, let's see where we get, the, if we get the close tonight to, uh, to do something on the long side there in crude. The Euro, Similar to the idea that I've just talked about in terms of the dollar index, uh, we'll, we'll have to see where, where we close today. We'd be cognizant of the fact we've got this ECB meeting, we've got these huge options pinning, uh, pinning in the, uh, the market at the moment. Um, you, there, this work with, I'm seeing on the wires talk about a two trillion uh, euro stimulus package, which, uh, which is pretty much the bare minimum for what they need. Um, and we'll see how that's delivered to the market. Um, but for now, I think whilst we're holding these 109.90 highs, then I'm looking for a retest of this uh, 106.30 area. And then the potential for a, you know, a significant double bottom to develop as we complete the equality move, and then maybe the opportunity to trade higher in the euro. So really watching price action as we test into this area, looking for bullish reversal patterns um, to do something on the long side in the euro. And obviously that that's versus the idea that um, that the dollar index would trade up in and hold um, this resistance area because obviously they trade um, inversely. Sterling <coughs> Sterling has pulled back into symmetry swing support, and um, if we hold here and we get uh, get a bullish reversal, then I think long uh, long positions should work at least for a test of this uh, 127 area. And again, that if we bring in our retracement tool. So if we look at the decline, so that brings us broadly into that 78.6% area. I think from there we would probably then see a more sustained pullback, uh, probably looking into the um, 50 percent retracement area of this move if it plays out. Um, before we can potentially then build for another leg higher in terms of cable. Um, dollar yen going nowhere sideways um, in the market at the moment. Technically, what, you're, what, we're, <coughs> what we're looking at is whilst we hold this um, resistance at 109, then we can see the downside target here at 104.50, but we're, uh, we're going nowhere fast at the moment in terms of the yen. Swissy, Swissy's broken out of its triangle and now looks poised again uh, to test the equality objective and potential here for a, for a significant double top. Um, and that again broadly coincides with the idea of the euro putting in uh, a double bottom here. So you can see the synchronicity in these some of these dollar pairs. So we've got some key levels we're going to be watching. So I'll be watching for a retest of this 9890 area again, bearish reversal patterns. To, uh, to potentially do something on the short side, looking um, to see if we got watching this um, this resistance area trend line in terms of the psych indicator as well. So keeping an eye on that. Uh, the loony, you know what I'm looking to do there. So we'll see if we get that uh, that close to confirm the trade tonight. Uh, the Aussie, it's held its. Um, symmetry swing support and um and if we get a bullish close here then it looks set for the aussie to to trade up and test this uh, this is the quality objective version versus this structure and it's the 78.6 percent retracement and we've got these prior lows over here so this will be a very interesting area um, if it plays out in terms of the aussie testing up here from here 
uh, I would expect a more sustained pullback in terms of the Aussie. Um, so the level that I'm going to be, you know, if we can get a bullish close here, I think we've, we've got the potential for a breakout. But ultimately, what I'm looking for is a test of this 67 area where I'd be looking to, um, to set short positions with, uh, with the price confirmation. A similar story in the Kiwi. Um, whilst we uh, whilst we hold the symmetry swing support, we can see uh, we can see this grind higher. Um, let's just bring in this here. So if we can get a bullish close there, that initially would target a move up to 62. But ultimately, as with most of these pairs, and, it, and if you think in terms of the S&P 500, I'm really focused on these 78.6% retracement areas that see, you can see across these major markets that they're, uh, they're all, uh, all looking to sync up. And, um, and I've talked about CAD-Yen and CAD-Swiss already. Um, Euro-Yen, watching this test of this big, double bottom in the euro yen and we've got this contracting um, price pattern here obviously what we would need to see um, if this thing is going to reverse is that you know there would have to be some very positive news out of this uh, this, this eurozone area uh, but i've been looking for a bullish reversal if we if that news does come out later today or tomorrow um, back through the 117 area could uh, could see us trade up then and test retest this 119 range high but we have to see no price confirmation as of yet. Um, so with respect to the markets and the opportunities uh, I see at the moment, I'm really focused on, uh, on the Canadian dollar and, um, and again thinking in terms of the uh, seasonality aspect of that as well. So that's, uh, that's it from me for, for this week guys. Does anyone have any questions or any chart you'd like me to take a look at that I haven't covered and I can give you, uh, give you a view? Um, yeah, I mean, if, at, at this stage, uh, right, it's uh, it's really just uh, it's a positioning squeeze, a short squeeze. Where we, you know we've been heavily oversold, um, and it, it, what would really drive, like you say, what would actually drive a, a significant recovery would be um, would be a vaccine, certainly. Um, but I, I, it would appear at the moment. Well, we've got UK in the UK. We've got um, human trials starting. Uh, with the Oxford Research Lab. So, I don't, you know, nobody knows at this stage, but at the moment, what we're just seeing is a repositioning and actually allow a, a correction to take place. And that's all we're thinking in terms of at the moment. I mean, we're not looking to pick bottoms here, but, um, you know, we kept, technically we've been very oversold and could witness a correction. But in the long term, uh, from an economic perspective, then, you know, it really is all about a vaccine at this stage to, uh, to really. <laughs> Uh, deliver some positivity to the markets on a, an extended basis. Any other questions? Okay, if there aren't any other questions, I'll wrap this one up here. You can follow me um, through the uh, through TradingView at FX Career Swap. Um, you can follow, uh, reach us through the site fxcareerswap.com or you can contact me personally on uh, LinkedIn and I can point you in the right direction um, for those who want information on that. Um, and if there aren't any other questions, uh, we'll wrap this up here for this week and I'll see you all again at the same time next week. Safe trading, guys.